What's ironic is I won one of these in like 97 for best hair. Every now and then you get the opportunity to be a part of something that... Every now and then you get to be a part of something in this business that is truly just... Well, it can only be described as magic. And this past year at WrestleMania, I had the opportunity to be part of something that truly was just magical. And um, for me to be out there with two guys that I respect more than anybody in this business, Shawn Michaels and a guy that I quite literally just, I consider to be the benchmark of what this business is about, The Undertaker. That what that night was, uh, a, a, again, magical night that I will never forget. Uh, it truly was an honor to be a part of it, and it was the end of an era. But um, I'll let you guys in on a little bit of something, because I know there's a million dollar Guys, let me just let me just say this from the bottom of my heart. It's thank you. And I mean that. Thank you. And here's the deal. I know there's a million dollar question out there hanging in the air, and I'm gonna answer it for you right now. You've not seen the last of The Undertaker. Thank you very much. And now, more Pro Wrestling Weekly with your host, Ferran Derry. It's Slobberknocker good! Get it. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Rocking a little Vince Guaraldi heading into the holiday season here. You gotta get the Christmas music going, you know? It just... You, you, I'd be a humbug otherwise. You know, I figured I'd shake it up. I know in past years I've you know played stuff like... Uh, Bobby Heenan, Gorilla Monsoon, and Roddy Piper, uh, you know, discussing whether or not Santa Claus was real. And we had the, uh, the Santa Claus uh, from back in, uh, gosh, 95, I think that was. That was uh, Balls Mahoney's old character when he uh, was briefly in the World Wrestling Federation. Yeah, they, I know. We're, we're, we're going a little bit old school. I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to, I guess, learn the youngsters a little bit. Yeah, that, there was... they. In December, I think of of ninety five, they for a couple of weeks they had basically an evil Santa Claus character called Santa Claus with an X, and he wasn't from the North Pole; he was from the South Pole, and he didn't give presents; he took them away. That was the whole gimmick. And then they kind of realized, oh crap, it's January. People, you know, that they've moved on past the whole Santa thing. So that character lasted only a couple of weeks, but it still kind of lived in infamy in my twisted racked brain go figure all right let's uh well sit, sitting in here one of our uh one of our interns yeah i guess you can call me an intern intern extern i'm, I'm a guy that hangs out and likes to do radio stuff so i guess that's okay a, do oh. you have a technical name for that sounds like an intern uh, okay. I, I would say extern <laughs> but well it depends do you, do you have a degree for this stuff uh i i have a certificate certificate all right <laughs> that qualifies you as an extern then okay all that, right that sounds works. good all right, our, our X-tone, uh, X tone, X turn Theo. Easy for me to say. See, he's he's going to be taken over soon for me at this point. Theo, welcome, uh, w- welcome to the well, yeah, w- welcome to the mix here. I know you, you, I I love getting different people, and usually it's you know Samsel kind of running his uh, running his mouth about whatever's on his mind. I've been trying to get Montfaletto in here, but he's too busy trying to you know further solidify his bench press championship or something like that. Whatever well, then maybe cr- he can be the next uh, Attitude Era superstar then if he's uh, hitting the bench presses like that. Well, I, I've i joked with him. Is he going to make a run at Dino Bravo's record? But, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It depends on whether or not Jesse Ventura will be around to help him with the pinkies. <laughs> Dino Bravo taking it back. Yeah, I know. I, 
I, I love a lot of that 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 classic stuff, and we'll we'll be we'll be kind of going into that. That we're leading into my favorite time of the year, Royal Rumble. So we'll have a lot of uh, r- retro Royal Rumble rewind type things and other alliterations that begin with R. You know, just just uh, whatever creative stuff can go on here. But I mean, l- looking back to the uh, the audio clip that we just uh, we just heard here, or listening back to it, however you want to uh, however you want to view it. Triple H uh, coming out to accept the Slammy Award for Match of the Year. His match against The Undertaker, the end of an era, Hell in a Cell, Shawn Michaels as a special guest referee. No question in my mind that that was the match of the year. I mean, the the other matches that were, uh, it's it's a, uh, other nominees were, were good. Cena Rock, it kind of suffered the fate of having to go on after the Triple H Taker match. It was It was, you know, kind of a penultimate finish in that regard despite all the hype Sheamus and Big Show at Hell in a Cell it was good definitely top five but you know obviously can't hold a candle to either of the two mentioned and Cena and Lesnar was certainly brutal I don't know I'd I'd even put Sheamus and Big Show ahead of it but then again we haven't seen much of Lesnar over the course of uh, the last few months and I think you know out of sight out of mind so that certainly uh, hasn't helped matters either but Triple H saying we haven't seen the last of The Undertaker the only question I have is in what capacity. It's not like he has said the Undertaker will wrestle at WrestleMania 29. So I don't know. I don't know if he's uh, well. I don't know what he's working on. I mean, I, I, my best guess is that he's working on his uh, his wife Michelle McCool. But that's <laughs> that's a whole uh, that's a whole other. Well, they they just recently had a kid, so they're ra- you know they're raising the kid. That's the yeah, that's oh that's where you're going. with That's that. where I was going okay. with that. Where I don't know where you thought I. Actually, I do know where you thought I was I going thought you were no, talking no, no, about no, in the no, process no, no, of no, making... No, 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 <laughs> no. that's already... That, that, that's, why, that's why he was g- gone from WrestleMania 27 to 28, you see. I mean, he, he's, he's a novelty act at this point. He wrestles only once a year, continues the streak. He's up to 20-0 and 0 at WrestleMania. That, I was going to say, that they didn't really make much acknowledgement of it when you were watching during the Attitude Era, but, uh, you know, as, as he was racking them up, it was kind of one of those observations of, oh, yeah... He's wrestled X number of times at WrestleMania and has not lost. Well, actually, I I address um, any kind of a girl that I've been trying to get with for a lot of years as the Undertaker because it's you know X amount of years and O oh, for me. Like I always have zero wins against her. So well, okay, so it's like the invert. <laughs> All right, it's. See, so so your record is probably closer to like a Tito Santana or somebody like that. Uh, he he, I think was two and seven in his WrestleManias. Or, I don't know. Somewhere a while back, I'll have to pull those out as we get closer to WrestleMania. The the win loss records. I mean, Shawn Michaels refers to himself as Mister WrestleMania, but he's got a losing record. Does he really at WrestleMania? He always has the best matches, but for the most part, he came out on the losing end of them. You're right. Well, he is the showstopper, so I guess in WWE terms, uh, I don't think wins and losses particularly matter as much as how good of a show you put on. Yeah, but when you're not putting on that good of a show and you're not paying attention to wins and losses, that's when you get sub three ratings on Raw, and that's what WWE's got going on <laughs> at the moment. But um, all right, let, let me quick go over the uh, the Slammies, the the good, the bad, and the ugly that was that. Uh, Booker T presented the first award of the night, the Tell Me I Didn't Just See That Award, the shocking moment of the year. There was uh, the Brad Maddox low blow from uh, from Hell in a Cell, the 18-second victory of Sheamus over Daniel Bryan from WrestleMania 28 for the world title. Yes, that's right. The match lasted 18 seconds. I've seen matches like that before. Yeah, at, at WrestleMania. I mean, it was even shorter than the... Uh, Oh gosh, uh, uh, King Kong Bundy special delivery Jones from uh, from oh, back wow. at WrestleMania yes. one, and that was well. They said it was nine seconds, but in actuality, it was twenty three. If you go back and you know, and didn't Kevin Nash win one of his world titles off of a big boot? Like, he, it was a big boot to the face. I can't remember who it was against, but it was a big boot. Well, it, it, it wasn't was a, at WrestleMania, but yes, that uh, that was, was a house one of the show, shortest. Wasn't it? Uh, it was a house show. It was in Madison Square Garden three days after the ninety four Survivor there Series. You go. It was then WWF champion Bob Backlund, and yeah, yeah it was just a, a, a boot to the gut, a jackknife, and a three count. Eight seconds later, Diesel is your new uh, your new WWF champion, and uh, it ran on Diesel power for close to a year. Yeah, I know. I'm. I'm <laughs> I, You're I've a wealth of com- knowledge. I know. I, I <laughs> <laughs> I know that that's that's what a lifetime of having uh, very few friends comes in. Very few close friends who 
thankfully uh, endured, you know, hanging out with me and watching various pay-per-views on Sunday nights and things and flipping back and forth the channels on uh, on Monday Night Raw. But uh, I was going to say one of them I was hoping to have here today, but uh, you know, it's seeing family and all that. Uh, I don't know. I'll, so I'll get Tim in here at some point. Long time. He, he's he's one of those guys that uh, you know we became friends. Basically, I think I came into high school my sophomore year, like choir class or something. And I had, might have been a Bret Hart t-shirt or a Razor Ramon t-shirt. Yeah, I know. It's, no, Razor Ramon was my boy back in the day. Couldn't stand Bret Hart. Loved Razor Ramon. Yeah, well, it, he's another guy. He just, so many health issues. I mean, did you see that E60 oh, thing? Sad. Yeah. Sad. One of the saddest things I think I've seen on E60. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they did really well from a journalist standpoint of it, but, I mean, as a fan, you're just looking at that and going, oof, man. My childhood died when I saw that. <laughs> yeah, we, we definitely have those moments. All right, let, let, me, let me get back over. I, I, that's the only downside to, to me you know, having people to interact with is I get on tangents upon tangents upon tangents. I mean, look, look how far we've gone here. Let's get back to the slammies, though. Uh, the, the winner of the Tell Me I Didn't Just See That Award, Kofi Kingston from the Royal Rumble. Because of the rule that both feet have to hit the floor and they didn't say anything about both hands, he was thrown over the top rope, landed hands first, walked on both, like, like basically did a walking handstand over to the steps, climbed back up the steps and in the ring to make the save. Wow. Yeah, that was that was definitely a, a shocking, uh, shocking moment. Uh, the New Age Outlaws came back to present the Comeback of the Year award. You had Brock Lesnar, Chris Jericho, Degeneration X from Monday Night Raw, to the uh, the thousandth episode, and the glaringly obvious winner, Jerry the King Lawler, coming back from his heart attack. Yeah, that was kind of won that by default. That was, though. It, it was. It was definitely a setup by default. Uh, and then Vicky Guerrero presenting the Kiss of the Year, which. The nominees, all four of them included AJ, and it was either AJ and Daniel Bryan, AJ and Kane, AJ and Punk, or AJ and John Cena. Man, she gets around. <laughs> In this case, uh, John Cena got the nod, which is odd because the night before she had turned on Cena. Uh, Superstar of the Year, as you had heard, John Cena won that and got uh, mercilessly booed by the Philadelphia crowd. And then, of course, there was the Hashtag of the Year Award, which was awarded to Ryback. Hashtag Feed Me More. Why is that a category? That This is what I mean. we, we got to figure out how, how can we fix the Slammies to legitimize them. There's the, the LOL uh, award. You know, for the, uh, the, Of course, when you have people who are trying to write for comedy, you have to... It's almost like an award for, all right, which writer wrote the best thing? And that went to the uh, Kane and Daniel Bryan therapy sessions. Oh, wow. Which, yeah, that's... Um, <laughs> I mean, they, they were entertaining, but they became the focal point for quite a while. And then Newcomer of the Year Award, you had the nominees of uh, Antonio Cesaro, Brodus Clay, Damian Sandow, and Ryback. And Ryback won that one, although you could make arguments for either Cesaro or Sandow. I would say Cesaro just because of the four of those newcomers, he's the only one with gold at the moment. He's the only one who's won any kind of championship. Sandow's come close, but not quite. And then, of course, the match of the year, which nice to see Mean Gene Okerlund, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, and Jim Ross in attendance to, to present those. Another, another three, uh, three old-school individuals in, uh, in that regard. All right, I've ran, run my mouth enough. Let's go ahead and get to the phones, because I know you guys have been waiting patiently. I appreciate it. Thank you for dealing with me. Uh, let's go ahead and start things off with uh, who we got. Steve? Steve, welcome to Pro Wrestling Weekly. How's it going, Brock? Not too bad. What's on your mind? Well, you got me all, you know, pumped up when I heard Rick Flair's voice. Yeah, he... Uh, <laughs> as soon as I heard John Cena, I said, God, could Rick do a double cross right now? I say, wait a minute, we're in Philadelphia. I meant Rob Van Dam. And that would have been that would have made my day. Yeah, well, uh, Van Dam's still, I think, entrenched in TNA, so I, I don't think there's going to be any kind of double cross in that regard. But would it really have been a double cross, considering that the crowd was already cheering Flair and primarily? I mean, it was uh, from in there live. I mean, you could hear it. You could hear it on TV, and it sounded like it was about seventy-five percent boos, twenty-five percent cheers. For Cena, but in the arena, it felt more like 90-10. I mean, it was well, just if that. Really him, if they really want him to go down as the most hated wrestler in the WWF or WWE, I mean, the most hated, let him be the one to take Undertaker out of WrestleMania. 
and you'll have the best guy to boo for the next five years. Which, I mean, that's if Cena's going to be around. Well... I, that that would put Cena up to the age of about forty. You know, looking right. looking down looking down the road five years from now. Yeah, but I mean, because basically, if they're going to build this guy up as that corporate guy, it's going to it's going to backfire. So, I mean, it just seems like he, he's being used the wrong way. I actually, I think Steve has a point, though. I kind of agree with him because I, I think it's kind of ripe right now for Cena to get booed. You saw how easily the crowd turned on him when The Rock was in the picture. You see how he gets booed now in Philadelphia, as you already said. Like, mm -hmm. he gets booed in certain places. Yeah, I mean, Philly, Chicago, yeah. I, I think the conditions are ripe for Cena to make that heel turn and a permanent heel turn. I mean, but I'm not, talk, I'm not talking just beating Undertaker. I mean, I'm talking about retiring him. Never to be seen again. And him walking around with a shirt that says, I'm the taker killer. That's because, you know, as I know, the best heels, ask Ric Flair, when you're hated, you make the most money for the company. Well, I think in this case, whatever, I mean, whatever drawing power there would be, since WWE seems to be finding ways to turn away its uh, its audience almost as much as uh, as the NHL has and they're <laughs> they're they're not even around exactly but well, um, I, couldn't, I couldn't get in a couple weeks ago when you had your best four against your best four in Survivor Series mm -hmm. I'll tell you the teams I wanted to see the Road Warriors in their prime Telly and Arn against the Click you pick your four <laughs> I think that would be and, and there'd be a special referee in that match Somebody all eight of those guys hate. You know who I'm talking about. Who do all eight of those guys hate more than anybody? Hogan. Uh, yeah, I was, I, I was going to say, I, I was doing a coin flip. I was like, all right, is he going Vince or is he going Hogan here? And, but... and, and just as Ric Flair is going to put the uh, figure four on Triple H, that big bum breaks it up. <laughs> Ends in a draw. That's a Vince McMahon production. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely right about that. But no, I think the the, the biggest factor that's that's preventing a heel turn from Cena one, I think because he's such a good person, yeah. it just it goes against his nature. Like I don't know if he knows how to be bad necessarily, but as as Mel Brooks said in Spaceballs, merchandising, merchandising. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess jo John Cena the T-shirt, John Cena the hat, John Cena the wristband, John Cena the garden gnome. I mean, there's, there's, yeah, you know, the the kids love it. You know, there's yeah. all kinds of, all kinds of reasons why. You know, and and most of them, most of them are the things that uh, that Ted DiBiase would stuff down somebody's throat at the end of the match. Right. <laughs> well. I'll tell you, you know, must you know, must be eating this all up. Is CM Punk saying, "What do I got to do to be the top dog here?" Uh, my, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was going to say, I, I haven't exactly mentioned him here in the show. I mean, it, it's kind of hard because he's injured, but yes, as of right now, he is your reigning WWE champion for 398 days and counting. Right. Do you think there's any credibility to the fact that when there are actual heavyweights around, the smaller guy gets less credit than when you have bigger superstars like John Cena compared to CM Punk, just like it was harder for Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels to get to the level of prominence that they were at when there was still a Hulk Hogan running around the WWE? Oh, easily. And that, that, well, that stems from Vince McMahon. That, I mean, that I've been adamantly verbal about for ages. Vince McMahon loves the big guys he wants his you know his champions to be larger than life you know they it, it almost i've joked it almost seems like a fetish of his it's just <laughs> it might be yeah he he wants the you know he he wants those those i don't want to say prototypical because they're usually you know anything but but you know six four six five six six even taller you know 270 280 290 you know he he wants bigger guys it's it's I'm um, almost like getting into a Vince McMahon impression just like talking about it. He, he wants them larger than life. Well, that's why he's wasting Brock Lesnar's whole deal. I mean, if he was wanted Brock to go after a certain person, he would have done it by now. True, but I, I, I think I think he knows as far as punk, there there is money there. And, I mean, the, the whole underappreciated thing, I mean, that just feeds more and more into it. No pun intended with anything with Ryback. Although something tells me eventually Ryback's going to be that guy. Yeah, you know, Just, you know, he reminds me of somebody from a couple of years ago. One of the tough enough programs. Uh, they called him the Silverback. I don't know if you remember that wrestler or not. Oh gosh, 
he almost made it, and they found out he was 30 years old. And they, and they, they, I remember that. Yeah, and the kicker, wasn't, or wasn't that, no, that, that was, um, well, did, didn't they end up bringing him in eventually as, uh, as the boogeyman? Wasn't that Marty Wright? I think it was. But they, they, they yeah, yeah. They, well, he said he was 30, but in actuality he was 40. That was what the issue oh, was. Oh, that was it. You're right. And yeah, it was, it was Marty Wright, it, who it eventually came in as the boogeyman, who also made a cameo appearance on Raw this past Monday night. This, this Ryan back guy, he just reminds me of certain other wrestlers. You know, very basic, very strong. But who am I really talking about? Is this another cheap imitation of Batista? Well, I think the comparisons have been more. I mean, he he works a style that's similar to Goldberg. That's who I was thinking. And, I was thinking Goldberg. And I was gonna say I gotta get running. Th thanks so much for the call, Steve. He Take works care, a buddy. style similar to Goldberg, and at least early on, he cut his promos a lot like the Ultimate Warrior. So that's kind of a, an interesting and frightening uh, dynamic. Anyway, we're. See, I've been running my mouth so long, we're, we're so late for a break. So let's go ahead and take care of that, get that out of the way. We'll get to Rob on the other side. Uh, I know John's been, uh, been very, very uh, uh, involved on the, uh, the Pro Wrestling Weekly Facebook fan page. We'll get to that in, uh, on the other side as well. And we've got room for you also. 215-949-3232 or toll free at 888 888-922-2149. Those are the ways to reach us here on Pro Wrestling Weekly on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com.